I'm just going to go through microorganisms. I'm having to do a take two because Dexter felt like he needed to contribute to the last one. Okay, so bacteria are prokaryotic and the organelles that are highlighted are the ones that you need to know. We've already gone through this. So this is a plasmid. You know that prokaryotic cells have circular DNA. What you should know is that microbes, or bacteria in particular, reproduce through binary fission. And they do this. It's very, very similar to mitosis. So they replicate the DNA, they replicate the organelles, they share them out. You get two identical copies. So this happens every 20 minutes. So every 20 minutes, the bacteria content of a colony will double. And you need to be able to calculate, going backwards or forwards, how many microbes are present. So, for example, if you said after an hour that there were 360 bacteria in a, um, bacterium, bacteria in a, colony, in a colony, you would know that at 40 minutes there would have been half of that, so there would have been 180. And you would know that at 20 minutes there would have been half of that, so there would have been 90 and you would know that the colony started off at 45. It works very similar to half-lives, how you do your calculations, so it should be a simple calculation for you to do. You can just check that you know what you're doing by going up in the table um, and making sure that you know there's 60 minutes in an hour, because sometimes you forget things like that in the stress of an exam. Right, so when we um, culture in microbes, we've got a choice of um, a nutrient broth, which is in liquid form, or we can have um, agar gel. Now, agar gel is made from seaweed, and it's highly nutritious. So you can get cell, cell colonies growing on there. Before you make these, you have to make sure the Petri dishes and the conical flasks are sterilised, and you do that to make sure that there's no microorganisms already present that will contaminate your culture. So you use sterile equipment. Now, there are some things that you need to know that you need to be able to comment on that are part of the aseptic techniques. So if you're using an inoculation loop, an inoculating loop, sorry, to transfer microbial colonies from one plate to another or from a broth to another place, you need to sterilise the loop first by flaming it in a Bunsen burner. And you can see um, here that you have to flame it so that it's glowing red hot you have to allow it to cool as well because if you use that red hot fl um, flamed loop then to transfer colonies the likelihood is that you'd kill them so you're aiming to kill the colonies on the loop to start with not the ones that you're transferring on there you need to make sure that you tape your petri dish so we don't seal around the entire outside of it because that encourages anaerobic bacteria to grow which are usually pathogenic so we sellotape it, it's a bit like a hot cross bun I usually say, but you can tape it like they have with little pieces of tape and then you store it upside down and you do that to stop any microorganisms getting in and any microorganisms getting out. Now in schools we don't tend to culture any of our growths um, at any temperatures above 25 degrees and that's because when the temperature is warm you will get growth and if you do it higher than that you get a faster rate of growth but you're also more likely to be um, incubating pathogenic bacteria that are more dangerous so we're only allowed to go to 25 degrees in school the next slide just shows you how you go about making the plates in general so you can see that we you have to use glass not plastic but you flame the neck of any um, bottles that you've got that have got the agar in so that you're trying to reduce contamination and then when the agar plates are grown obviously you don't use them if there's any colonies that are on there so you need to be able to calculate cross-sectional areas of colonies or clear areas or zones of inhibition and um, so you need to make sure that you understand how to calculate pi r squared 
And this is a, a picture of a pressure cooker. So after we've cultured microorganisms in a school, they have to then be heat treated. So they're heat treated at extremely high temperatures to kill all of the growth on them. And then they're packaged in special bags, discarded. So on this particular experiment, we, c we call this an antibiotic assay. And um, I would hazard a guess that the um, bacteria on this plate is probably MRSA, so Meticillin Resistance Staphylococcus aureus. And I'm guessing that because the meticillin isn't having any effect on this bacteria at all. So this particular antibiotic does not work. You can see that vancomycin and erythromycin have similar effects, but you can see that penicillin is the most effective because it's got the bigger clear zone. So you need to be able to calculate the clear zone of these. So obviously there's your, di there's your diameter. You need to just measure your radius because in order to calculate the area of that, you need to do pi r squared. And if you remember in your mock, that's where some of you went wrong because you calculated the diameter instead. So the radius is half of the diameter. So don't forget to do that.